Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this month's webinar, all about unlocking the secrets to organizing a successful professional product photo shoot for your business with the lovely Victoria Gray from Wooden Table Productions. So hi, Victoria. It's lovely to have you on. Oh, thank you for having me. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I've known you for about 17 years now. You came on our webinar last year where we covered all sorts of things to do with your previous role when you were group lifestyle editor at Reach Media. Um, I've known you through all of that when I was a PR time, but you've recently uh, set up your own creative production agency, Wooden Table Productions, with a colleague whilst also continuing to write for freelancer for a few titles like the Express, Telegraph and Saga, I believe at the moment. Yes, yes, right? yes. And recently, a few weeks ago, I was so lucky enough to work with you, Victoria, and your photographer business partner, um, Clive Chalice, on a shoot for my new Airbnb letting property in East Wittering. And this was organised by the lovely Karen at Esprit PR, who gifted a lot of bathroom items for my Airbnb in return for Mariners. So the, 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 the house is called Mariners in return for that being a case study. And you'll see that in the press in a few months. But so a few weeks ago, Victoria and Clive, you came to my house and spent a day producing the most incredible photos of the bathrooms. And so I thought, what perfect opportunity to get you on talk about everything there is to do behind a successful product shoot and um and so here you are thank you <laughs> <laughs> so first of all I think there's quite a few people in the audience who don't yet do professional shoots as well as people who already do them and, and want lots of tips today but if you are on the fence and are wondering what what added value does it bring to the final end result of the photo? Do you want to cover that off first? Yes, I think so. Um, well, basically, having um, a professional team, you know, working with a professional team to help showcase your product um, is, is a brilliant way to sort of get your product out there and seen. And, and what um, a professional stylist and photographer can bring to um, your party is, is experience really. So all of the experiences that they will have learned over the years with you know all of the past shoots that they will, will have done, you know, they can they can pull all of that and, and really help you to um, showcase whatever it is that you know your brand or your product um, in the best light. Um, and they will have you know be able to give you lots of advice and support really from depending on how how you want to approach it but almost from the kind of conception if needed right through to you know adjusting the the, the sort of final images to make sure that they are absolutely ready for whatever you need you know wherever you need them to go whether it's in print or for your website or for a brochure um so yeah experience i guess as well as the sort of you know the obvious um you know, um, attributes that a, a photographer and, and stylist can bring. And I think that and they're not to be not mentioned, you know, we need to mention those because the, the quality of photography, I mean, as soon as I can share those photos, I will definitely do a blog post on them and put them on our socials. It, they were they were outstanding. And, and I think that, you know, it's really important to realise the degree of of um, professionality it will bring to your brand and certainly from my perspective in the with my PR hat on the difference of quality of coverage that you get from those professional photos is is huge so you will get more from the brand value as well as the PR value and all the marketing assets that you know you'll be producing and we'll go through the difference of those shortly um so there are lots of people involved in a shoot and sometimes it's a bit confusing about what their roles are so do you want to just explain those those people and what they do yes well it, it, it tends to start with with your brand manager or PR marketer um marketer who who will will have sort of start the process and that discussion normally starts with what you want to achieve so whatever it is these are the people that that kind of say right let's let's move this forward and let's kind of you know put a, a shoot together um and then you will um then choose a stylist and photographer mm -hmm. quite often um it's good to to have to choose a, a sort of a stylist and photographer that have worked together. You wouldn't ever really want to choose sort of just select one photographer, albeit, you know, their work may be incredible, but it, it's always good. And quite often 
a photographer or stylist will give recommendations of who they've worked with in the past and who might be good for for you know whatever they are that whatever it is that they're shooting um and also in my experience as well I was chatting to um another stylist recently and everybody has sort of different areas that that they focus on and are brilliant at mm. so sometimes even if you approach a stylist and they say you know I'd love to do this but maybe I'm not quite the right person quite often it's quite an open community where they they would say and I certainly would if if it wasn't something that I felt was my you know my expertise would be best at I would recommend somebody else so um you you stylist and photographer um you on a on a shoot that there can be you know it can be a cast of thousands or it can be quite a concise team um it's always great to have um, on a shoot someone from the brand or the PR that really, really knows the product and also um, is able to sort of share, you know, that a brief will have been will have been discussed and they can make sure that this is kept on track. Um, and what what the great thing is about collaborating with a with stylist and photographer is that sometimes the brand will have a very clear idea of what they want to see and produce which is great but a stylist and photographer will bring extra things to that so although it may um you know we're we're always focused on producing the best image of the product but ultimately what the brand might want which could be a very sort of tight close-up shot a stylist will think well this this is great but this isn't going to be as editorial so maybe if we do pull back slightly so I think you know that that's always great to have that collaboration between um you know the PR manager um brand photographer and stylist um um, this is sort of I was going to ask a bit later but I think it's a good time so just to understand you can if you are the the founder of the company or the brand or marketing manager or PR manager you might choose the stylist or you might choose the photographer first. It's not yes. that you always choose one and then they will find the other. It's that, you know, it is up to you who you go 100%. and they will generally generally pick someone that they've worked with and recommend yes. someone. A recommendation, um, yeah. you know, not always. And sometimes brands have a very clear idea that they've, they've seen this photographer, love their work, and they've seen this stylist and love their work. And, it, and it's not, it's not um, a complete no-go area that you'd bring together two people that have worked together but in my experience it's always good to have you know at least to have some dynamic between your team otherwise it does yeah. sort of feel a little you know it, it can just take a little while to to sort of get into things if um if people haven't met before and haven't worked together before right so we've got the PR or marketing manager or founder you've got the stylist the photographer so who else are some what are some of the other roles or titles you might hear um on a shoot or involved so, in shoot? Um, quite often when I've worked with big brands there's always there's generally someone an assistant that will come along um, Mm -hmm. again and you can never underestimate the amount of stuff (laughs) that will be on a photo shoot so it's always great to have um, somebody that's kind of managing um, once things have been shot putting bits away so um, an assistant from either um, the brand or the the PR that's always a really helpful um, person to have on a shoot depending again on the size of the shoot and the type of the shoot um the photographer may have an assistant if a if a um sort of complicated lighting setup is needed then they would definitely need uh, a lighting assistant and again as sometimes a stylist depending on budget depending on the you know the type of the shoot a stylist assistant but you know that's something that at the beginning of the concept when you start discussing this with your stylist or photographer you know they can help you guide them sort of guide you as to whether you know who will be needed and I always think it it kind of you know I'm I'm not a fan of a a shoot that has thousands of people on it it just it does seem to be you know it's a very busy day and it can sometimes be um you know distracting having lots of people on a shoot Mm -hmm. but um you know, you, you key people that um that, that should be there would always be your someone for the brand um or PR. Great. Lovely. Okay. So um let's go through the steps then. So you want to you decided that a shoot's right for you. So what's the first thing that you would do then as a as a brand or a founder? Um the first and most important thing is is you come up with your brief. Mm-hmm. So you have an idea. So you create a kind of mood and a brief of what you actually want to show. 
um, and also what these images that are going to be created are going to be for. So whether they're going to be for print. So you've got a very clear idea as to as to what these images and where they're going to be going. So um, that might be print. It might be social. It might be uh, website. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It could be okay. for a, a brochure. It could be um, yeah, advertising. It could be for a big advertising campaign, depending on what you know, depending on what you're, you're after. But knowing, you know, I think. Often now um, images are shared. So on a shoot that you will create images for your website or for a feature, which is what we were doing with, with um, yeah. the Beautiful Mariners, but also you've kind of got an eye on, oh, this might be good for a social image. So things mm -hmm. are shared, but ultimately um, you, you need to kind of establish right at the beginning what these what we're doing what these images are for and where, yeah. and where they're going to be and that is fine to be multiple scenarios I certainly know at the mariner shoot it was uh, there were a few things that were being yes. shot for so but editorial yeah. um website social and some video actually was in there as well so it was yeah. a really that was a it was a big it was a big one <laughs> busy, busy yeah and there's yeah. certain things that again um you know just just different ways of shooting so something shot landscape may be better for a website mm. so you need to maybe bear that in mind whereas um, lots of print images will obviously be portrait yeah. but so establishing establishing your brief and establishing where your where the images are going to be going and be used yeah. is is the most important um, first step yeah um, and then the, you will sort of create within that you will create the mood of, of the style of the shoot, whether it's going to be super modern or classic. Um, and often um, at this point, the brand may then want to sort of already start speaking to, to a stylist who can then kind of help with that direction. Um, so although they're not sort of moving away from anything that the brand wants to achieve, they can kind of bring an expertise um, and, and also help you with a location potentially, which is obviously sort of another step that needs to be organized. Mm. Um, and again, there's, there's so many different ways of doing this and, it, and in terms of budget, lots of different ways. So some things can be shot, you know, at someone's house, which obviously can really keep the cost down. Um, certainly um, for the past, I don't know, sort of 10 years, I've shot all the food for the magazines that I've worked on, OK Magazine, S Magazine um, and Notebook Magazine at home, um, which obviously costs, you know, cuts out a huge amount of cost in terms of hiring a location or a studio. So there's that option or um, hiring a location house, which, um, you know, is is you need a budget for but ultimately you know you can if you're if you're looking to create something really really outstanding and need your product to be seen in a certain setting um a location house is a, is a great um you know is a great way to right and so is there a ballpark with um location house you know is it a couple of hundred pounds a day or is it five thousand pounds a day roughly yeah. What would be what would be typical? Okay, well, it 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 um it prices have gone up recently, and also prices um f there there are fewer location houses. I think COVID had a big impact on that because I think a lot of people, um, you know, there, there weren't any shoots, so a lot of people changed what they were doing with the location houses. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a big difference between editorial and advertising rates. Um, with location houses so I would say a ballpark price that you would start with a location house would be anything from 800 pounds upwards for okay. a day mm -hmm. and your hours are normally from nine till five or ten till six or you know it's a okay. sort of entire day um, but if it's going to be used for advertising then that that um, price can really rock it wow. sort of you know you can be looking at five thousand six thousand pounds a day up, you know upwards I find it so interesting that um, and we'll talk a bit more about pricing um, towards uh, towards the last part but how how different editorial and advertising so what if a shoot is a bit of both so you're doing something for a magazine and then also the brand is doing something for it, going to use it for their socials and advertising is that just you're just yeah. and they'll meet in the middle or something yeah I think it's always good I mean my advice always is to negotiate with your location house and again when I've um been boarding in a quite early stages as a stylist for a photo shoot 
um, because I have rela uh, relationships with location houses, I've often been able to negotiate on the, um, the price um, mm -hmm. because it is going to be a little bit of both. Wow. It's okay. always worth being, I mean, there's, there's absolutely no point trying to sort of sneak in a kind of- <laughs> an, extra, you know, an extra photo, <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, not so much of that, but, but um, uh, location houses are very canny now and they will ask if you're filming, which is obviously a different rate oh. to, um, so um, I think you, yeah, you need to be transparent, but ultimately, you know, a location house is always going to want to be booked rather than not. Mm. Um, so there is always a little bit of movement. Um, but, you know, sometimes I've had to walk away from a location house be just because the, the budget is unrealistic and you just sort of think this is not, you know, it, it cannot be worth that amount of money. Um, it's, it's just too much. But negotiation is the key. And I think also, um, again, if you're if this is the first time you've dealt with a location house, if you're if you're thinking that you want to do this, I would say this is would be a time to sort of um, liaise with a with a potential stylist or photographer and, and have a chat to them and maybe help them in the negotiation process. And I suppose maybe also a consideration of a stylist who has a home that can be used, for, uh, they're open to using for yeah. shoots then mm -hmm. that could be part of your just you know decision making process as well um mm -hmm. just going back a step so um if you are looking for a stylist and don't really know where to to start your mm -hmm. research where where what resources can you recommend um well th there are a few um in sort of um past times um there's agencies so basically lots of stylists and i in the past have been represented by an, an agent but that to be honest with you is, is changing slightly um, big advertising campaigns or big companies that have global advertising campaigns that they want shot would probably go to an agent. Um, but now there's lots of, um, you know, communities online. Um, I work or have um, a part of Inside Stylist, which um, is a brilliant, brilliant um, sort of space to look for stylists, photographers, um, writers, assistants. So potentially, I could I could look on on there and, and look for an assistant for a shoot that I was working on. But equally, a brand could go there and have a look at you know you can see all your stylist portfolios. Mm -hmm. um, the lady that runs it, Emma, is very very brilliant at kind of recommending people. Um, I would also say you know chat to other brands and look at campaigns that have been shot or or features that you've seen that you've loved look at who's shot it, look at who styled it. So do a little bit of research. Um, but I would say, I think inside stylists is, is something that is kind of almost invaluable at the moment. And I, and I use them a lot. That's great. We love Emma, Emma Morton yeah. Turner. She's come on for some webinars. I mean, she's just this gorgeous personality in the industry. And so I'd really yeah. recommend that you give her a follow there at inside stylists or go to inside I think Amy's um, shared that in the chat. Um, so what else, how do you know, um, how do you know what will work, which stylists will work? What, what questions should you be asking of them? I think, um, you've got to see that, um, you know, look at their portfolios, um, and quite often, um, when I've been um, shortlisted for a job, um, I always have a ask for a meeting or, you know, a meeting is um, initiated and you have a chat with, with, with your stylist or potential stylist. You don't have to sort of settle for one. You can kind of interview a couple, um, you know, three, four, um, or however many you think, you know, just to get a feel. And I think um, showcasing, you know, getting them to see their work is important. Finding someone that you think you'll get on with and you know you like you can communicate well with because ultimately that is very very important um ask lots of questions recommendations are great as well mm -hmm. um if you settled on a photographer again they will give you recommendations mm -hmm. but um yeah i think there's lots of ways instagram again is such a brilliant way of um of looking at sort of work that's been created by stylists and seeing if it fits with the aesthetic of your brand or company um, you can kind of you can see if that will work brilliant and inside stylist has portfolios as well so that's a really great uh, very yes. time efficient way of looking um yes. so I was asked um for the shoot to send I think um Karen referred to them as happy snaps <laughs> and I'd never heard this concept before uh, um but they can be called we were discussing when we were on the shoot day so they could be called recce shots happy yes. snaps and snappy snaps yes 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're photos that are of the of the location or of the products or a bit of both. They're just they're just the four shots to give you a sense of what to do. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So it, it depends really. Again, if you're if you're booking a location through a location house then you will have, there will be professional shots of that location house. So their snappy snaps, happy snaps, recce shots, <laughs> will be these beautiful aspirational um, images that really, really show everything about the location from the sort of height of the windows to the furniture inside them. So that's their recce shots. However, if you are shooting at, as we were, the location had obviously been decided. Mm -hmm. So as a stylist, I needed to see sort of quite early on what the space was like what was all you know the decor of what you know what was already there so these are shots that literally are taken on an iphone or, or any phone and just you know they're not styled they're just literally used to illustrate the space the size the lighting what's already existing within the property the flooring um you know if there's any furniture that's going to be involved in the shoot um, so that is where these come in and these are normally sort of sent quite early on so it can be if the if the location house has been decided on as as were with mariners that was sent in the kind of original brief so this is what we're doing this is this is the product so the bathroom um, and this is the space mm, okay and then um so you've got your recce shots you you just briefly talked about that first meeting um yes. to discuss the brief is there anything else that particularly goes on in that first meeting prior to the shoot? Yes. Um, what often happens, and certainly what, what I'm used to doing, is in, in that first meeting, the brand will discuss what they want to do. What I always like to do in an, in an in or sort of after an initial meeting is to come back with some mood boards. Because mm. the most important thing about putting together um, a professional shoot is the stylist understanding the brief and being able to illustrate what the brand wants to showcase. So that are, after an, an initial meeting, I will then put together some mood boards. And these are, you've got to be a little bit careful with mood boards because you need them to showcase the style of what you're going to, to be producing, but you don't want them to be so aspirational that you've taken, you know, it's unachievable in a shoot. Yeah. So it's a real balance, but these can really be good for setting the mood of the shoot. So you're all on the same page in terms of the style that you're going for. As I said before, whether it's going to be ultra modern and very minimalist and kind of stripped back, or whether it's going to have a sort of a vintage charm to it. Or So these mood boards are really great for kind of referencing um, the style of the, of the shoot. Um, I've also been asked... Um, before to, to provide sketches. So when um, a location house has been decided upon, so this in this example, it was for a Halloween shoot. So um, the, the brand wanted me to sketch their images within the location. Wow. So again, it, it was, I was a little surprised when I was asked to do it, but it, it was fine. And it, we, you know, we put together these sketches. Mm -hmm. So it's just a kind of just, I always work through um, the shoots that I want to do. So I know that in, in each shot, the pro this, these are going to be the products. And this was a, a way of doing that um, through the medium of sketch, <laughs> which, <Okay>. was, <laughs> which was a little bit. Yep. So um, just to clarify, so you have a first meeting. Is that once the brand has committed to working with you or is that prior to show them what you yes. know, what you could do well wow, okay so that's a big that's a big investment from the stylist or the photographer yeah. to go I that would far. Say, yeah absolutely and I think I think if someone doesn't really want to do that I think that could be a little bit of a sort of red flag I think you absolutely need to have that um time spent discussing what as a brand you want to achieve and the stylist as in you know what they can produce for you okay. um it doesn't the meeting doesn't have to to be a long meeting half an hour and then you know you right. can okay. I, I would always offer a mood board to say mm -hmm. okay I've un so just to prove that I've understood the brief and this is the direction that from our meeting that that we, I, I understand we are going in. And I think without that, 
the last thing you would ever want is is miscommunication from your stylist mm. or photographer mm. and the brand mm. I mean expectation you know ensuring that expectations are being met um is so important and and initial mood boards are a kind of great way of sort of you know making sure you're all on the same page right great so then once you've done that meeting then you commit and you will agree the price that you're going to be paying yes indeed yep. okay and then after we'll talk about pricing in a little bit actually yes. and then then what's the next step so you're, you're all good to go you're committed you're and, go. and what what's next so you will have either um, chosen a location or choose the location together. Um, and again, it's really interesting that, so you've got to assume that um, I think the first instance is if you've got your stylist on board, then you give them an option for dates. So you know when you want to shoot. So you're, you want to deliver images for a September campaign. Okay. So you need know that you need to shoot pretty quickly so you will option your photographer so you'll say okay I want to shoot quite quickly are you available this week week commencing and this is called an option so the photographer will say and the stylist will say um you know because it, it can be a little bit like herding cats you've got stylist photographer and location mm -hmm. so option your photographer so you, and and stylist say so you know that they are available this week and then if you're using a location agency for a, to hire a location it's really important obviously then to speak to them as soon as mm -hmm. and make sure you've got those dates because one of the things that can be you know quite frustrating is to try and get everybody available on the same day mm -hmm. um and although you know it shouldn't be that hard sometimes it really is hard because people are so busy so once you've optioned your photographer and stylist and you've then you've booked your location and you've kind of locked down a, a time and a date that is fantastic and then again we were sort of discussing that in terms of depending on the sort of location now I always really like to recce a location if I haven't like, like physically go to a location if I haven't already shot there um I, I think it is quite important I know lots of the London locations so I have been to a lot of them so in a sort of 20 year right. career I, I do know them quite well um but again you don't want to kind of choose somewhere that then is going to be you're going to be surprised when you get there mm -hmm. and again a sort of little tip that I would give to anyone that if they are using a location agency to ask lots of questions um I had a an experience where which could have been you know really really unpleasant but I'd booked a location um agency a, a house through a location location agency shoot a campaign for a well-known brand and we kind of had gone down a sort of bit of a theme of a color because based on the um the products that were already in the house i.e the sort of beautiful wallpaper and the sofas and when I arrived to the shoot everything had been changed the house owner had decorated from blue to red and it was it was almost like one of those heart-stopping moments when it's like oh my goodness how are we going to make this work so I learned and I hadn't recceed this property and I hadn't checked that um the furnishings were still the same it was really unprofessional that the the um the location agency hadn't updated their images and it was their sort of if yeah. there was fault it was their fault however it was a lesson learned mm -hmm. um and you know so it's always great to recce now if that's impossible this is again where these recce shots come in so mm -hmm. if for instance i was shooting in a location that i'd never been to but it was someone's house i would ask for lots of information about the um about the, the property that we're going to be shooting because you don't want to turn up and they're just things like access as well if you've if you've got lots of product and you can't get your sofa in or you know so that's where that's where that sort of right. lots of conversations around that um and then then it's on to prop sourcing I believe is the next phase and that must be the bit that is the fun bit I imagine yeah. that must be great yeah. and do you need to, yeah sorry go on sorry no go, go on I was just wondering, um, as a brand, is that included in the fee? Do you need to leave a budget to pay for extra bits and who owns those or do they get, re uh, how does that work? Yeah, well, it very much depends on on what the brand is or, or who, who you're working with. So um, quite often you're working with a brand that has the product. So mm -hmm. it's just the stylist is, is almost selecting the brand's product. So 
um, you know, I did a, a shoot for HomeSense recently and, and it was obviously all using HomeSense products, but I as the stylist was the person to, to collate those products. So um, it can be done that way. If the product that the brand that you're working for, if their product is just a single product mm -hmm. um, and this is the product you're focusing on and this is just for advertising or for their brochure, then you might want lots of you know, products and props within these photographs, but they're not for sale. So then you would use um, a prop house. Um, right. Again, as a stylist and most stylists that I know, their houses or studios are full of props, <laughs> sort of vintage pieces. And we're all kind of slightly kind of, um, you know, magpie-esque and, and find little bits and think, oh my goodness, this will be great for a shoot. So um, as a good stylist will have to hand um, an array of, of props that can be that, um, that reminds me Emma does these brilliant um, Instagram reels where she goes to a car boots and finds <laughs> these amazing props so yeah. and her house is full of them so that's really worth a watch it's great yes yeah I think every stylist that I know uh, you know an obsession with a car boot sale having cupboards that kind of look quite sort of you know every the house is quite neat and tidy you open yeah. cupboards and it's just piling <laughs> full of um yeah bits and pieces but quite often those little kind of little bits and pieces and and um vintage or antique props or something that's been slightly worn can really bring um life to a to an image and really make um a brand new product a brand's product just give it a bit of sort of extra um provenance really? and and so um, in preparing for the shoot, is there anything particular a PR or a marketing manager could do to make that day go really smoothly or more efficiently? Um, I think communication is, is so important with, with um, making a day go smoothly. I always would want to know how many shots I'm shooting. Mm. So um, one of the, um, you know, it's really important to, to understand that if you're doing say 10 shots, I, as a stylist, will want to know exactly what I'm going to use in each of those shots. Yep. So, um, and I'm quite forensic about this. I write a shot list. And sometimes that, you know, I will share that with the PR manager. So we will have discussed, we need 10 shots. These are the products that we're shooting. I will then sort of say, okay, we're going to shoot this light, this lamp with this candle and this ornament on this side table. So it's a real kind of illustration. So, you know, what you're where you're shooting and what you know you as a stylist as well you will know what will work together um the last thing that you want to do is to arrive at a shoot and just be a bit like right um you know and not have a <laughs> how are we going to do this um so again I always like to really communicate a lot with with the with the brand or the PR manager to sort of just you know little checklists and we're shooting this amount these are the the shots that I'm thinking of um I so think it's it's so interesting. I mean, uh, I've not actually done that many shoots in my career. It's always been given to me uh, from um, the marketing manager, for, for example, or, you know, on press after everyone else has been, you know, putting in their products that have been on, on, in shoots. Um, it's just how um, how many images are, are done in a day and how long it takes. You know, at mm. Mariners, it was a full, full day yeah. shoot. It was yes. nonstop. Yes. And there were, I think, 12, beautiful images at the end that were yeah. fine I mean I mean hundreds and hundreds thousands of photos were taken yeah but it was that moment where you knew you'd got the shot you knew you got the shot was yeah. there were 12 of those moments in that day it yeah. was incredible and yeah. I think it's it's really important to be really realistic about that and um that the value of those 12 shots I mean they they are phenomenal and I think it's good to understand what what you will get in that one day as well uh, from somebody who hasn't done many of them um okay so you've got the day itself um and then after the shoot what 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 will you expect I mean what happens after you've got you you, you know gone through that process we've gone through we, we've got our beautiful shots and again it's on a shoot it's really it's collaborative as well so the the stylist will be constantly you know you're 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 working with your photographer so I always um I always like to have the space to to set up 
my styling for the shot mm -hmm. and I kind of um what's brilliant and um, with my partner that that I work with in wooden tables is that we kind of each give each other this space to create what we're doing so I do my bit and then he does his bit and then we kind of come together um so you've you've kind of done that um after after you've got your shots and and the PR manager has looked at them and, and what's great to have you know when you're on a shoot you always need in an ideal world, you'll have someone from the brand or you'll have your PR manager and they will be able to, as these you've decided on, this is the shot. We'd like to show you this. Can we check that you're happy with this? And, you know, more often than not, it, it is perfect and, and they are and, and that's kind of, you can move on to the next one. So you've got all your shots together. And then I always like to try to give um, a mood board sort of within, you know, as soon as possible of, of what has been shot because, um, you always want to go and have a look at yeah. it. I, I do as soon as I get home, I want to have a look at, you know, oh, you know, what, what we've achieved today. So, um, and these mood boards will be, um, the images will be untouched, they'll be, the colours won't be balanced, but the, the setting will be there. So you'll be, you know, there'll be a good illustration of what, um, what, what is to come. Before. that was lovely seeing um the one for mariners straight away it was within 24 hours i think we we got one it was lovely but i just want to reflect a little bit on how lovely it was to hear you and clive working together and um yeah. it was this lovely just iterative collaborative process and you would quietly you know move something and and then clive would shoot it and then you'd just sort of sit and you know just quietly talk to each other and then half an hour you you carry on doing this and then suddenly you both go we've got it and it was just this this moment where you both know absolutely mm. you've got the shot and mm. is that quite unusual as a way to work together uh, do you think you've got a, spe a special relationship in that respect or do you think that's quite yeah. common I think I think um I feel really lucky that we have that and it isn't a given and I've definitely worked with brilliant photographers where you haven't had that it just hasn't come together mm -hmm. and what is so lovely with what I Clive and I do together is I create something that visually I, I love the look of and I think this is the shot and then his camera elevates it to another level mm -hmm. so um, it takes it you know, it takes something that I've created and makes it even better. Um, what can happen, and if you haven't got this kind of, you haven't got the same sensibilities and you're not sort of working together, um, sometimes, you know, I've set up something and then the camera's gone on. It's like, oh, yeah, it's not quite right. And you, you know, that's a really long process then to sort of try and, and move things around and kind of get that right angle. So I would say it's every stylist dream to find a photographer that takes what they do. And then as soon as their camera's on it, it makes it look better. Um, it isn't always a given, but I think that that's what every, you know, every good stylist, and this is why stylists tend to kind of have a group of photographers that they enjoy working with um, right. because it makes their work look as good as it can be look good and be more efficient um, yes. I'm sure yes. yeah okay excellent um I'm going to change tack slightly but I I found this really interesting on the shoot about the lunch and so who <laughs> provides it and um what what it what makes a great lunch as well shoot lunch is literally you know the hallowed shoot lunch it's it's the thing of legends I mean stylists and photographers talk about their favorite <laughs> so um, I, it, it depends again it depends really it's often um, sort of PR manager um, or right. um, you know or the brand that will supply the lunch and quite often if I'm doing a big shoot with a big production say Marks or Spencer's I would sort of say would, would do you mind um, okay. grabbing the lunch mm -hmm. I've done it many times you know no one minds doing it but just someone has to do it mm -hmm. um, and um, it, it tends to be again it's what makes a good shoot lunch it, it's always got to be sort of picky things because as you said mm. um no matter how organized experienced and brilliant you are a shoot day is always absolutely there's not a moment to spare mm. and the idea of all kind of sitting down and kind of having an hour for lunch you know very very occasionally it happens but not often so it's a sense it's a sort of case of getting a little picky bits so that you can kind of almost have a bite but kind of, you know, you've got to stop for 20 minutes, otherwise, you know, you get fried. But um, 
you know, little bits that you can pick up. Also having lots of water or, you know, Diet Coke used to be the thing that we'd all knock back. <laughs> I yeah. think we're a bit healthier now, but um, having lots of drinks because you're, um, you know, you're, you're on the, on the move. I mean, I looked at my Fitbit after Mariner shoot and I'd done 40,000 steps. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't, I mean, it's your con because you're constantly sort of, you know, moving yeah, and adjusting moving and, and moving and adjusting. Yeah. And, wow. you know, actually I have to caveat with that by saying that I had, I had had a walk in the, evening, but <laughs> you, you know, you're on, on the move constantly. You're not, you're very often, not standing still you're constantly no, moving no. so fuel is important um and yeah. lots of tea and coffee actually that was definitely tea and coffee amazing. and also, also you know something sweet late you know a, a yeah. biscuit in the afternoon and it's always yeah. I think it's because everyone's so busy it's always such a welcome um you know a welcome relief to get something to eat it always like and it's it tends to be the things that you generally wouldn't allow yourself on a normal kind of day so <laughs> sort of crisps and dips and <laughs> nice. children's party good. I loved it and Karen <laughs> did provide the the food on the day and then my husband went out and got loads of biscuits as yes. well, which was good um so what other things that can make a shoot go badly and and have you got any particular horror stories that you want to share with us today well I would say <laughs> that that what what can make a shoot go badly is is kind of having unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. so I think this that is the that is the kind of um, the, the most difficult thing for a photographer and a stylist is, and it tends to be, when I say that, it tends to be the, the number of shots that are achievable. Yeah. Um, but really that should all have been kind of discussed in a, in, in the brief. And, you know, sometimes you do need to achieve, I mean, I've been on shoots where we've needed a, to achieve 80 shots, but it's had to be done over a series of days. Okay. Um, but trying to kind of just, bang things out um, on a day it just it's really it's difficult to maintain quality and ultimately you know a photographer stylist no one wants to start compromising on on what could be a beautiful shot mm. so I think managing expectations in terms of what what is honestly possible in a day um, and again if you're unsure about that that is a good conversation to have with yeah. stylists and photographers um, and then also the, the the sort of worst thing that can really happen on a shoot and occasionally this does happen because it is weather related or act you know something has happened where the direction of the shoot change mm -hmm. so everything that we have discussed and talked about and created mood boards suddenly has to go out the window and you're, you've got to think on your feet and you've got to do things differently um, that can be quite unsettling for everybody <laughs> um, if you're working with an experienced team they will get through it they will you know, you will still get what you want, but ultimately it's always best to try and stick to that plan, that initial kind of, you know, what, what, what we've discussed, the direction we're going to through, as I say, you know, if something really isn't working, you absolutely have to have a team that's able to kind of work through a little problem and think, okay, well, this is obviously is not working. We've got to either shoot it in a different place or in a completely different angle or light it differently. You know, there will always be those little kind of hiccups um, but having a professional team is where this, this is where that they sort of really kick in and it's like, okay, now we can, you know, we have the skills and the experience to, to make mm. this work and, and to, right. to bring things back on track. Great. And, um, we briefly mentioned earlier about the different styles of images for different usage. Um, so do you want to talk through maybe how does a, a PR and editorial image differ from a social image, for example? Yes, yeah. Well, um, a PR image, um, so the likes that would be seen on press love, you know, these tend to be, um, they tend to be portrait mostly, um, although not exclusively, but you yeah. kind of think of about, you know, ultimately every brand's, I would imagine, best case scenario would be having an image that they created on a shoot as a full page bleed in a magazine mm -hmm. so you you know as a stylist when if that is the goal you are always thinking about how um, that image is going to fit into a print publication where the headline is going to be where the text copy, you know where the text for the product is going to be so um, sh sort of life you know they tend to be lifestyle aspirational glossy portrait images is is you know that's that's generally but what's interesting actually in that 
it, with the shift to online, we the requirement is very often also now landscape for yes. the, the sort of header shots on a beautiful online article. So I guess your requirements are shifting yes. in that respect for, for PR shoots as well and editorial Absolutely. shoots for online. Do you do many editorial shoots for online, actually? Um, I've done a couple, but not, I mean... We're, we're still in a sort of early state with um, wooden table productions have only been in, um, you know, has, yes, has only been in course, production yeah. for, yeah. So, but I, I often um, always, and, and it's great to do different f- of one shot quite often. It's great to do different versions. Mm. So, um, and again, when you're putting together your mood board after your, your shoot, um, you'll often see different versions of the same shot. So right. one could be shot landscape, one could be shot. You know, there are always going to be shots that are perfect as a landscape shot, you know, a flat lay of a yeah. tablescape. Um, so again, that's kind of, um, and I think also it's, 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 it's good to choose the shots. You know, it's, it's best not to try and make something, um, right. a landscape or a portrait. You've got to kind of allow it to be dictated to but there are always ways you know if a landscape shot is needed you know you produce a landscape but but ultimately I think often the product dictates a little bit as to what what is best for so and and then social you've got all your different dimensions but you know in the grid it's going to be square shot yes like we mentioned um often landscape and then um video you you obviously did some video at Mariners particularly for this the way the shower ran but is that something you're asked for more now yes absolutely um and it's something that we we are going to sort of try and do a lot more of and 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 showcase a lot more of and because it is you know ignore it at your peril really people do want to see moving image and um it's it, it tends to be um you know just little details and just um short kind of you know 30 second shots of products sort of moving through um so yeah that's that's really important now as well and 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 again if you're a brand you know ask about that you know choosing a photographer that can produce a moving image as well to a high standard is is really important right right and so um what are some really common mistakes to avoid when you're doing a professional photo shoot? Are there any key things, you know, aside from organisation, is there anything else that we haven't covered that might be worth uh, knowing about when you're organising? Um, I just think always, you know, there's always little things that can um, disrupt um, if you haven't checked, you know, parking permits and things like that, just mm-hmm. making sure that if you are have got a location, you know, what the parking situation is like. Again, the, the last thing that you want to do is sort of to turn up and there's nowhere to park and you literally have to drive 20 minutes to, to find a car park or something like that. So mm-hmm. just, you know, thinking about the bigger picture um, mm-hmm. and the surroundings. I mean, that's that's um, that's something to, mm-hmm. to think about. Um, also, um, after you've shot, um, you've got to sort of obviously pack up everything. So it's all, like I said before, it's always great if there's someone else on hand that can mm. think, can give a hand. If it's in a big production, um, you know, that's a good, you know, that, that can be, if, you, if you're renting a location house, you've got, you've got to be out by, you know, this time mm. and you've spent all day, you know, you, you need to have some time or some help to sort of get everything right. in and out. Um, Quickly. just be helpful just be there to be helpful and efficient yeah great so I'd love to hear more about your journey and I mean it's it's very very new with wooden table productions but what what how does it, how did it start and how long have you been going and which, which shoots have you done as well so far uh, well as um you mentioned before I, I spent 20 years at um firstly the express and then I was group editor um and I met Clive Shellis who is um, co-founder of Wooden Table Productions. He um, was predominantly a fashion photographer, um, used to work with David Bailey. Um, he wow. worked at Hoban Studios and he has shot, you know, the most incredible sort of fashion campaigns. And we met on a shoot and kind of got chatting and got on. And um, we, some years later, we did a, a sort of, he contacted me and we did a little test shoot together. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an interiors and we just, it was not for publication, but we just kind of thought, oh, let's just do this and see. And the photographs were beautiful. And we, um, you know, I loved working with him. So 
he then went to start to shoot for when I, while I was still editing, uh, editor at um, OK um, S Magazine and providing the, the content for the other supplements in OK, he started shooting food and interiors for me. Mm. So um, we, yeah, we work together um, always, as I say, you know, when you find a photographer that can, you create something and then they put their camera on it and it just elevates it. Um, so when I made a decision to leave Reach, we'd kind of spoken before about doing something together and it just really was a no brainer. Um, and the lovely thing about starting Wooden Table Productions, because we are so collaborative, um, you know, often if a brand is, you know, they're seeking out a photographer and a stylist and they, you know, there's recommendations, but we, we sort of come together as a package, not exclusively. Um, I did a styling job recently for a company called Chelsea Peers, which um, I didn't work with him. And he did something recently for um, a brand called Temple Spa. And, and, you know, I didn't do that one, but we tend to, you know, we, we work together and, and we, you know, can manage our, you know, we come together, our diaries are managed. So it's, it's sort of, you know, it's easy. It's a, like a one-stop shop nice. in a way. And so what, um, what would go into pricing a shoot, particularly say with you rather than just generically, how, how much would it cost to put a shoot together? Because I think this is really intimidating yes, for someone yes, coming it, into this. Yes, it is. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a, a kind of, um, you know, how, depending on what it is. But yeah. my rates, my styling rates start at £350 for a day. And um, there's there's generally in terms of being part of a shoot, there's there's always or very often a prep day as well. Yeah. Um, my rates for that are two hundred and fifty pounds for a prep day, yeah. and within that, that would be a sort of as I, as I mentioned before, the first sort of initial meeting would be free of charge. But then once um, I'm committed and I've been booked, it's then you know producing kind of extra mood boards, sourcing, curating props. Um, returning props, collecting props, just, you know, managing the whole, you know, looking at locations. Um, and then a photographer's fee. So through Wooden Table and um, production, Clive's um, photographer fee starts at £600. Um, and that is for um, sort of editorial. Um, and, and sort of, I'm, I'm not going, I don't want to say advertising in terms of global advertising, but if it was for, it would be 600 a day for a lookbook or right. um, if it was for a big advertising campaign, which was going to be on the sides of buses and, you right. know, stores, okay. it's a different, it's a different scenario, right. but that's our sort of starting entry prices. Mm. Um, and roughly so, he would be a day and that includes yes. the post editing as well? It does indeed, wow. yes. Um, again, we're um, slightly unique in terms of because it's a sort of package but that includes all retouching and editing of images. And again, I sort of because I've approached this from a point of being an editor in the past or so employing photographers to to shoot features, you I always need to know what what the bottom line is. So if someone's um, day rate is you know 700 pounds but then I've got to pay another 400 for retouching or editing because you know it it, it just that can completely blow the budget so we've tried to keep things um really you know, great includes. so, so I you, mean, for, yeah so for 1500 to 2000 pounds including a couple of hundred pounds for props and travel and things yeah yeah you've got 12 ish maybe really yeah. really good shots and I think that's really great to know because I think so many people don't know what it's going to cost and are very intimidated as to whether it's going to be five thousand or or they're more but um no that's yeah. really great and we appreciate you sharing that my pleasure um so if people did want to work with you how would they best contact you well through wooden table production so um our website um with our contact details are there um have a look at our sort of new Instagram account, which is, um, it's wooden underscore table underscore productions. So please give us a follow. Um, as I say, it's it's not embryonic, but we, we're kind of adding content. So we, we've only, you know, we've only done eight posts so far, but again, um, that's a great way to sort of see what we're up to um, and contact us through there as well. Brilliant. Well, I have, I've um, so many questions for you now. So please do yeah. keep firing in. I'm going to go through them all now. So. Um, 
Kim's asked the cost, which we've just covered. Who sources a model and how much would that cost roughly? If you can. Um, again, decide. this is something that um, it's good to work with a photographer and stylist for sourcing models. A model can cost anything from, I mean, surprisingly, £120 up to, you know, if you wanted Kate Moss, it's going to be a little bit more. But that I was, I'm always quite surprised at how little um, a model costs. Um, it, it does depend on who you're using, um, but you would source it through an agency, but your stylist photographer can help with that. And again, a, an experienced stylist and photographer will have agencies that they would prefer and can say, well, this agency is great. I, I normally use them. Um, and you know, then you look at their portfolios as you would a stylist really. Right. Um, so if I have a necklace to promote, can I collaborate with an aligned fashion brand shoot? Um, is that common that people combine shoots with, with different brands? Um, I think it's becoming more, I mean, I think it's, it, it's normally for the brand to decide who they want to do that with, but quite often, yes. I mean, that, that does happen. Um, so, um, yeah, it's normally, I mean, I think they would normally reach out to someone in the first instance to say, I would like mm -hmm. to kind of work with you. This is my, um, it's not generally something that as a stylist, I've been asked to find right. someone. Um, but again, that's not, that's not saying that, I couldn't do that, but that, you know, generally it comes from where they align themselves, that the brand that they would want to. But I think in my experience recently, I think lots of people are wanting to do that. And I think it's mutually beneficial as long as you choose the right person to work with. Um, another question from Pale Savani. Um, when should photography for Christmas PR be ready for Longley Press? Actually, that's probably slightly more for me. Um, so now, J July, June, really, <laughs> probably a bit like, yeah, uh, June, July is optimal for that. And actually, I've got a question, Victoria. So what lead time should you typically give a shoot? So you mentioned that you would option a certain time of people. What what would be good? Three months, two months? I mean, yeah, I think as 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 far um, as far in advance as possible. Um, and also, you've got to think of depending on what your product is. So if it's something that requires to be shot outside, you almost want to kind of do it a year in advance because you don't want to be shooting wow. your beautiful summer parasols and cushions yeah. in in. February which is when you would need to do it for a summer print deadline or a kind of mm. when the ground you know when when the you know country <laughs> the ground the garden is looking horrendous mm. so planning is everything um things are changing in terms of deadlines with print media now I I was always when I was editing I always wanted to have things as close to deadline as possible so that I wasn't um, sort of stressed and I've got the printers sort of saying where are the images because I wanted everything to be current and time tied but um, because I think teams are so much smaller now um, certainly before I left reach I was being asked to pull forward and pull forward and pull forward so giving almost for a weekly publication having almost a two-month lead time which is um, was unheard of in in my sort of career that that just seemed like a really long time um but I think you know don't don't delay I think if you want to do it mm. start start planning um you know have a very clear idea of when you want to be published mm. with online obviously it is different because you know things can be turned around within hours mm. um but if you're if you're thinking of of print then you, you need to allow a lot of time um, but I also think that it's always best to, to be able to kind of, um, if you want to pitch something, so you're, you're trying to create PR shots that potentially are going to be for online, give yourself enough time that you can pitch several times to get that sort of, to get that noticed and picked up on. Amazing. Thank you. Well, we've come to the end now. We've been talking nearly an hour. Amazing. We've gone <laughs> on for hours more, but thank you so much for all of your tips, sure. advice. And it was an absolute joy working with you on the oh, show. Thank you so much. So do um, give you a follow um, and, and, and take a look at Wooden Table Productions and, and thank you everyone for being here. Take care. Have a lovely day. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye.